What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. We are going back into some foot champions. As you can see, uh, I said I missed a few games by accident on the recording. We've got 7 wins from, 20, from 15 games at this moment in time uh, whilst playing, which is really, really bad. 7 wins, 8 losses. I'm not going to lie, I'm unbelievably disappointed. We was in a much better position, sorry, we were in a much better position this time last week. I feel like I had grown as a FIFA player. I feel like my team is better than it was before. Um, but for some reason, we are just not cutting it in the games. And uh, I, I just want to, first of all, I've actually got a whole bunch of stuff from uh, the last video comments that I've got up on the screen for me to read out and then respond to because I think it's fun. But um, also, uh, I see some comments in the comments section wondering why I show specific stats or highlight specific areas. It's not necessarily because, like so sometimes I show stats because it's like, hey look, I dominated this guy, I lost, that's unfortunate. But sometimes I show stats because it's genuinely like, look how close this game was. You know, even if I win it or even if I lose it, on another day, this game could have gone the other way. And that's a positive thing for me because it means, you know, on so far we're seven wins, eight losses. And to my recollection, only two of the games were an absolute blowout that I lost, which means six of those eight losses were very close games that I'm this close to winning to a point where we could have been 13 wins and two losses, which would obviously be amazing. <laughs> and we're not quite in that level yet, um, but hopefully one day we'll get there. Now, the first few things I've got um, on the screen are, first one's from Callum Grinlay. He says he sold for 6.5K because he is relevant in the Hammerbeat versus Dewgarden squad builder. And what that is referring to is yesterday, uh, in the in the um, Giovinco squad building challenge, I, I asked you guys, why did that Australian left back sell for so much? I didn't even realize, I knew that squad building challenge existed, but when you see Australian left back, you don't think that he's from one of those clubs. I thought he was from like the, um, the A-League or something like that, and, and he wasn't really worth much. But it turns out he was uh, very expensive for a good reason, and probably me selling him at 6.5k was too cheap. I could have probably listed him up for 8.5k or even 10k. There were only two of him on the market that would have undoubtedly sold. I probably screwed myself out of a little bit of money there, which it also explains why he instantly sold when I list him up. Um, so I thank you guys to, to Callum and to everybody else that mentioned in the comment section of yesterday's video that um, that is why. I th thank you guys. And I know also in yesterday's video I said that you'd get a double upload yesterday. The reason why you didn't is because I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I've literally in front of me right now, I've got four videos edited and I'm going to record them all at the same time. So if you're thinking, my God, he's wearing the same shirt for four straight days. I'm not. I've just uh, I've just recorded the same stuff. <laughs> I've just recorded it all the same day. Got a whole bunch of footage. I want to get through it all. I want to get on top of things uh, tomorrow or well, today as you're watching this. So by Friday, um, we can be back to in a good spot. And then the next weekend, like I said to you, um, I'm going to try and live stream on this channel my Foot Champions gameplay. That way it will instantly become a video on that day and we won't have to take Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday to get through the gameplay. That's kind of the plan, I guess. We do end up picking ourselves up another win in Foot Champions, guys. It makes us eight wins and eight losses now after 16 games. Again, I'm very disappointed um, in, in myself, in, in what I've done. However, we've moved up into Silver 3 for the road to glory. I kind of started off by saying like silver one w was where I'd be happy with, but ultimately like with the competitive person I am and, and with the fact that we have got good players and, and a good uh, you know foundation for this account, anything less than gold three would be unacceptable. I would have to get to gold three, 18 wins out of 40 games. If I can't even get a like 45% win ratio, I don't want to play FIFA anymore because I'm you know I do this for a job. I spend a lot of hours every day on this game. I need to be in a position where I'm winning more than 18 games out of 40, even in the most competitive game mode that there is for the game. So, you know, realistically for me, gold three would probably be an absolute minimum. Gold two being, uh, okay, this is where, like, you know, an, an average. Gold one or better being like, holy, cr did we just do that, you know? So uh, that's where I want to be. We end up winning the next game as well. We actually rage quit after 1 0, and I was happy to take it. After, you know, after the struggles that we've been through so far on this account, getting a very, very easy win, a 1 0 after eight minutes, I'll take it. I'll take the free win. We're now nine wins and eight losses. Happy to be back in front on that note. And then the next question or next, uh, the next comment that I pulled up for myself is from uh, Jerome. 
Jerome, I assume it's Jerome. Jerome has 98 subscribers of his own as well, so congratulations on your 98 subs, dude. Hopefully you hit that 100 mark soon. He says, you did it, Nep. You created a series that is almost the most enjoyable, if not the most enjoyable, FIFA series currently running on YouTube. Great job, man. Keep up the great work. And first of all, thank you so much. Um, Road to Glories have been really hit and miss over the years. FIFA 11 and FIFA 12, Road to Glories were huge. In fact, KSI's Road to Division 1 was the series that put him on the map. Um, for people like Air Japes FIFA, his path to power was huge for him back in the day. Calfrizi starting from scratch. My, uh, the ultimate team will rise to fame. Rise to fame was actually what put me on the map uh, back, at, back in 2011 for SA Sports Gaming. Roads of Glories have had a really huge impact on the FIFA community over the years. Through FIFA 14, FIFA 15 and largely a lot of FIFA 16, when the coin boom came, nobody cared about Road to Glories. And the reason why is because, like, let's say, for example, in FIFA 15, you could watch someone do a Road to Glory where they're struggling to make a thousand coins here and a thousand coins there, and, you know, somebody um, getting a bronze pack that was worth 3,000 coins to them, they'd be happy about it. But then you could just go and buy a million coins for literally, like, 15 pounds. So, so what happened was is people were opting to buy coins um, which was ruining the Road to Glory experience, which meant people didn't want to watch Road to Glories because they were relevant. It's like, why would you spend hours playing games when you could just go and buy anyone that you want for next to nothing? And I understood that. And then at the back end of FIFA 16, like EA did a great job of kind of removing the coin um, kind of issues in FIFA 16 and even better in FIFA 17. And um, towards the back end of FIFA 16, um, people were, again, looking for ways to better themselves without having to spend money, without having to buy FIFA points or without having to, um, you know, buy coins or invest time stupidly. And, and you know, like, like basically people want to know what's the quickest way I can generate coins in FIFA the most efficient way, even if I'm not good. And that's what mine and Nick's Road to Glory offer. And although mine and Nick's Road to Glory are different for many different reasons, like, you know, Nick does a lot of his stuff on live stream, so it's a lot easier for him because he doesn't have to condense it all down to video format because he puts the whole lots out. Um, you know, Nick gears himself towards less gameplay and he, he does a lot more bronze pack method and the, the player upgrades and stuff, which have been really successful for him. But although our road to glory is a different, it gives you two unbelievably incredible perspectives on how you can play FIFA without spending time or money and being successful at doing so. And it's I actually love the fact that there's this kind of imaginary rivalry between me and Nick. Like me and Nick are good friends. I hope you guys know that. And I, abs I respect him as a content creator and as a, and as a person. But because we do things differently, it, it's interesting because one, one could fail or rather than one failing, one could just be better than the other and one could generate funds quicker and one could have better pack luck. Like, I'll say it, Nick has got ridiculous pack luck on his account. The amount of bronze packs he opens where he gets uh, Sydney players or he got, the Dugard, he got, I think, two Dew Garden players in one pack the other day. He, today alone, he got a silver inform in his upgrade pack. I know we did that a couple of days ago as well. Um, in his squad building challenges packs, he's packed a couple of players worth 50k here and there. He, like, he just gets really lucky with his packs where I don't really get that luck. So, you know, it's, it goes to show, again, luck can be a big part of FIFA, especially when you're not putting money into it. Because I'm sure there's a load of you guys that have emulated what I've done and emulated what Nick's done and haven't had the same success. I do get some people messaging me like, look, I've just spent 10k on bronze packs and I've sold the things that you sell and I've kept the things that you keep and I've got nothing left. And it's like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes you could just be unlucky. I did a few bronze packs today. You'll see it in a future video. So spoiler alert, if you don't want to know what happens, you don't, I don't really show you what comes in the bronze packs anyway. You just kind of see that the items are sold. I packed a Swedish player that sold for six and a half K, a silver one. The very next pack, I packed an MLS silver that sold for 4.5k. The very next pack, I packed a Sydney player that sold for 10k. So in a space of three 400 coin packs, just those three players alone netted me like 25,000 coins. And I, like, I might have made a few other, you know, a few extra hundred here or there from other items here or there. But in general, like, that is just an unbelievable string of luck. There have also been times where I personally have opened 10 to 12,000 coins worth of bronze packs and not really packed anything worth selling, apart from storing contracts and fitness items to the club that will either come in handy through foot champions or will be useful to sell on the market when they're at a value that I'm happy with. Um, other than that, I, I could potentially be sitting there 10K in the hole thinking, well, that wasn't very effective, it wasn't very efficient, but for those times where you do get lucky, 
the bronze pack method is uh, very effective and, and in terms of upgrades it's obviously effective and I'll, I'll say something that, that Nick says as well um, you know you, you can't expect the bronze pack method to necessarily work if you have one or two thousand coins because if you open two or three packs and you don't hit what you need to hit to get that big boost you're going to end up losing your coins and being like, well, this just doesn't work. You do need like 20 to 30,000 coins because by the time you open 20 to 30k, the likelihood is that you would have packed something that had a very high value several times, be it fitness cards, injury cards, the foot injury cards, all injury cards, the players that sell for a bit. There's still two or three kits knocking about that sell for three or 4,000 coins. Sometimes you get silver cards in there. You can get the bronze informs one of them which is a common uh, card base card so he will come out as a common player so it doesn't even have to be a rare player you know you do need a lot of packs to be able to get the opportunity to do that you know like just doing it with a few thousand coins might not be good but going back to the original point that uh Jerion made or jerome jerome i'm gonna i'm gonna go with jerome going back to the in initial point that jerome made you know, suggesting that i created uh, a series that is most enjoyable or if not the most enjoyable I, 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 this is how I love to play FIFA, which is why I dedicate so much time to this channel and so much time to this account. But um, I love the fact that it helps so many people. And it helps so many people to a point where it hurts me personally. Because now when I come, I, sometimes I come into games and I, I'm, I just know that person's watched my videos. I'm like, God damn, look at what he's doing. He's doing everything I've suggested that he should do. He's got the perfect chem styles on. He's playing a good range of FIFA. You know, he's doing a few things here that I've, I've said that he should do. And that not, doesn't necessarily mean it was specifically me. He could just be, you know, pick that up himself. I'm not some like FIFA king that knows stuff that other people don't know. I pick up information just as you guys do. But sometimes it's very clear to see that, hey, this guy's picked up some tips along the way from myself. And then if he then ends up beating me, He's beat me because I've helped him beat me. Which so in it, you know in a way sometimes it hurts myself giving up the tips. You know some of the game mechanics that are broken, the near post corners, the far post corners, the driven shot. That you know everything that is a broken game mechanic that we've talked about, experienced, and shown video footage of. That's that only hurts me personally in the long run. But it helps you guys, and I love the fact that you guys that struggled year on year previously can now have. Not one, not just one, not just my series, but also Nick's Poor Man Road to Glory series, where you can look at two people playing the game legitimately, investing nothing but time, and still having the good fortune to play with the absolute best players in the game. So, you know, I, I, so although you say this is the most enjoyable FIFA series, and you say, great job, keep up the great work, it's, I, I, I want to thank you guys for, for watching it, because if, if you're not here watching it and enjoying it, it makes it a lot less interesting for me to do, of course. But I do love uh, I do love spending uh, you know spending my time on this series and making these videos for you. So those were the first two messages that I managed to pull up. The next message was from Elliot Ot Otterson. He said, "Do you think they'll eventually add a squad builder challenge with the Turkish league?" Absolutely. And one thing that I urge you guys to do, which I've actually started doing myself um, a lot more recently, is keeping those players that you get from packs and squad building challenges that don't have a real good value for the time where they do have a real good value. For example, you know, the Manchester United and Liverpool players recently went through the roof for prices where the cheapest Man United player was like three and a half thousand coins. Now, the day before, you could have sold Michael Carrick for a thousand coins. You could have sold Daily Blind for 1,200 coins. You could have sold Rashford, not Rashford, sorry, uh, Lingard for like six or 700 coins. And then 24 hours later, they're all selling for three and a half thousand coins. So I would urge, see all these players I sold here as we come up to this, see how some of them sold for 350 coins. I'm an idiot for selling them because there will be a day where there's a squad builder challenge where they're either helpful to me in a term that I can use them so that I don't have to buy a player or they'll be of such high value that I can sell them and make far more money. So in terms of the packs that you guys get going forwards, unless a player is worth probably two and a half K or more, don't even sell them. Just keep them in your club. Keep them for yourself. Use them when you need to use them. Or if there comes a point where you, like a squad building challenge comes up and like, you know, the one again, the one we're talking about needing two Man United and two Liverpool players. If you've got like four Man United players, you can sell two of them on. And instead of selling a Michael Carrick and a Daily Blind for a combined two and a half K, you'll be able to sell them for a combined 7,000 coins and you've still got your own two Man United players to put into the squad building challenge. So I would urge you guys to, to hold on to your players out of packs unless they have already a high value or unless you absolutely need them because it will benefit you more. So, uh, you know, again, to answer Elliot Otterson's question, do you think they'll eventually add SBC with the Turkish League? Absolutely they will. 
There won't be a league or a colour of card, bronze, silver, gold, special, inform, one to watch. There won't be anything that they don't put into Squad Builder Challenges because Squad Builder Challenges are great for the market, they're great for the game, and they are a hell of a lot of fun to be involved in. And I wish that they would do more of them. I know we do get quite a lot now. Uh, you know, we get some big ones that last two to three weeks. We get some that last, uh, you know, two to three or like two weeks, a week, ten days. Like the uh, Hyun Min Son one, uh, like the Raheem Sterling one, like the Del Piero one. You get some that last for the eternity of the game, like the Jonas, like the Giovinco. And you get some that last for just two or three days. I wish they would have more, like every day at 6pm, guaranteed a squad builder challenge. I would absolutely love that. It would be great. Anyway, guys, we end up moving up to 13 wins in total so far. We're nearly at that silver one point. I'm still hit and miss in these games. I'm, I'm having games where I'm, I'm playing good but not scoring enough goals. My defending in general was shocking. I was on tilt this whole weekend, man. I was so badly on tilt. I could not deal with all the crap of the, the bad start that I had. I was always felt like I was chasing and trying to claw my way back up when I should have just put... Once the game's finished... The next person that I play against doesn't know what I've done before, doesn't know that I'm on tilt, doesn't know what kind of day I'm having, doesn't know how I'm playing. He's having his own issues. He's having his own fight within FIFA trying to get up the rankings. And I should go into games rather than be sitting there thinking, oh, God damn, I really hope I win this one because I've just lost two of the last three. I should go into games thinking, all right, let's take this one by storm and make sure that we put this guy to the sword and make sure we make him feel the vulnerabilities that we're feeling. And I didn't do that until way too late in this series of games. The next message that I picked out to read was uh, Mario Beltran said, your voice makes me feel better, so soothing. Well, thank you very much, I appreciate that. It's nice to know that um, if, uh, if this face ever stops working, the voice will still be good for radio or podcasts or audiobooks or something. We, I'm sure we'll get somewhere. Now, in this game that you're watching here, I believe I fun leave. Um, if, if not this one, that might have already seen one, or we might be seeing one coming up. There are a few fun leaves in there, and I urge you guys as well to, to fun leave or win quit, as I like to call it. With me and Bateson discussed, we're calling it win quits. Um, I urge you guys to win quit because if you're out of a game, you're out of a game. And in foot champions, time is of the essence. There is no point hanging on after 60 minutes, three or four goals down, desperately trying to get a goal here or there and, you know, like doing whatever because the game's done and dusted. You've got that loss on your record. Take the L, move on, try and find yourself a win in the next game, hence the name win quit. You know, if you're in a game where you know you're beaten and you know you're being uh, basically bested by a better opponent, let him have the win. Let, you know, save him some time, save you some time. Everyone moves on happy and what I found happens and a few people tweeted me this as well And it's so true is that if you win quit at like two or three down With considerable amount of time left you don't get that added frustration through the game That you normally get like if you're three nil down after 60 minutes And then you score in the 75th and it's 3-1 and you're feeling like oh I can do this But then your opponent plays like a dick and he goes five at the back and he starts passing it around his defense and shielding it in the corner and all that does is drive you insane and it makes you play worse in the next game. Not even in the same game. It makes you play worse in the next game. Whereas if you just win quit when he goes 3 and up, you don't experience all of that nonsense. You move into the next game thinking, hey, hey, he was just better than me. Let me just take the L, move on, and get myself a win. So that's what I do a couple times in these, uh, you know, today's video and, and future videos. Next, uh, next thing that I pulled up is a comment from uh, Sean O'Dwyer. And he makes a comment every video, bless him. And I've, I've ignored it for days and days and days because it's just hilarious. But he asked me, is my father Irish? My father is not Irish. <laughs> um, don't know why he would ask if he's Irish or not. But no, he's, he's not. And uh, thank you, Sean, for being here every day, every video to make the same comment. I appreciate you, dude. Um, next comment is from uh, Matt Muchtaba McGee. I believe I said that right. It says, people still think he's cheating? Question mark. Why would anyone ruin five five plus years of YouTube rep for a few thousand coins in game? Do what you're doing. Net people that like you will support you. Well, I appreciate the comment. And I do just want to let you know, I don't necessarily think people think that I'm cheating. But in order to kind of dead any thought of people thinking that I would be cheating, it's easier to over explain and over show what I'm doing than get to a point where somebody says, how did this and this happen? What happened in between? This doesn't add up. And me sitting there thinking, my God, that was like four days ago that I did that. What the hell did I do? And not be able to have a reasonable explanation, in which case it would then 
insinuate and seem like I were doing something untoward. For example, you know, that left back that sold for six and a half thousand coins. If I didn't ask, some people might have just seen that and thought, what, well, he just sold, <laughs> sold a left back for six and a half K. I've just checked the market myself now and he goes for 400 coins. He's blatantly, blatantly just cheated there. Even though I didn't, and even though the circumstances were correct at the time, when the question might have been asked a few days later, I might not have remembered why or what. So sometimes it's just easier for me to say like, hey, here's everything. And if you think that I'm, you know, if you think anything untoward's going on, you can find it for yourself. And if you don't think that anything untoward's going on, which obviously there isn't, you, you could just carry on watching as normal and it doesn't affect you either. So it, for me, it just kind of gives the best of both worlds. And then last but not least, Pogdab, 247 subscribers for Pogdab. Congratulations, dude. Getting close to that quarter of a thousand mark. Says, how much did it cost you overall? Um, I guess he's talking about the uh, Giovinco Squad Builder Challenge. Ultimately, my dude, I don't know. I don't track how much I spend and how much I make because so much goes on in between time of playing games, buying and selling other players within my team and the bronze pack method that I don't have like a specific here. This is what I paid for all these players. This is what I sold all the items for. Here's the profit and loss. I don't have that, unfortunately. Um, if, if you guys, you know, if anyone has just way too much time on their hands and wants to go through all of the squad building challenges and add up how much I paid for each individual player and then also get like a general ballpark figure of how much I got back from the packs, you'll be able to let me know a lot easier than I would as to exactly how much I spent. Now, into the next game, guys, and the final game for today's video. We go 1-0 down. We eventually go 2-0 down. And this is a fun leave scenario, I do believe. That was a fantastic free kick, by the way. Um, th this opponent, to my knowledge, was just far better than me. He was just head and shoulders above me. He was a much better player. Um, and he deserved the win. And I think, yeah, look, I mean, look at those stats. I didn't even get close to his goal. Four shots, one on target. He dominated possession. I, I usually dominate games in possession and such. So to be absolutely mauled like that, he was a really, really good player. So fair play to him. But that, guys, is going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy this, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.